Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind, so if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazylifepodcast, and, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number, or um, go to nami.org, or um, whatever resource you can find. But just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. And try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you uh, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And uh, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you going to blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. Way. I don't care how you're doing, what's up or how's it hanging, I'd like to buy this world one last drink. Life sucks all of the time, stick it up your sunshine, and then you'll see the clouds every day. And then you'll see the clouds every day. Then you'll see the clouds every day. Welcome to the Crazy Life, everyone. My name is Jen. I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, we have Brian and Heno. Hey, guys. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it cracks me up. That was an interesting one. (laughs) That was, I think I just went through puberty again. (laughs) Oh! (laughs) When it's time to shine. (laughs) Puberty. All right, for all of you young people, that's a Brady Bunch reference. Yeah, I knew what it was, but uh, yeah. not For all you youngsters out there. Not that I'm a youngster, yeah. Uh. (laughs) Oh, that's too funny. So, it's been quite the week. It reminded me of, um, there's an episode of The Simpsons where when Homer's younger, he's in the choir, and he's singing like an angel. He's got a real high voice, you know, and Grandpa Simpson's like, you know, like, that boy of mine's going to make me rich or something. And then Homer's like, oh, (laughs) you know, like. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, Jen, I just. Oh, that's okay. Ah. No, that is, uh, yeah, one of the more memorable moments of The Simpsons, yeah. for sure. Ugh. Such a horrible time to go through as, as, yeah. a, as a boy, too. Especially, you know, if you're trying to talk to a girl or something, you, you know, because you're trying to keep your voice down in the, the bass range, but you're more up here, and then you're, you know, just, uh, <laughs> trying to sound cool while your voice is all over the place. <laughs> so much fun yeah it's kind of like when i lose my voice yeah never never a fun time but it happens depends on which side of the fence you're on there yeah yeah 
So <laughs> Jen lost her voice and first. there was much rejoicing. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> no. Um I'll go first. <laughs> okay, Brian, you're gonna yeah, go first. What the hell? Um, you know, this, this is going to be a theme for the week. First of all, I want to give everyone, I think we feel, I feel like we sort of need a disclaimer for this episode and that there's going to be some sad, you might get a sad from listening to this episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> the sad, <laughs> the sad. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I woke up, well, not woke up. I was still awake. Um, you know, Jen texted me today and asked me if I had seen a post by uh, a friend of mine on, on Twitter and I hadn't, and I went and looked, uh, only to see that a guy that we had had on, um, salty language, my friend James, uh, he, of the obscure gentleman had posted that his brother who does all the artwork for their stuff, uh, passed away and boy, what a, what a got to remember what show I'm on kicking the gut this was and uh you know it, it was just like I'm I'm so glad you mentioned it because I might not have seen it otherwise because like I was saying before we recorded I've been staying off of my timeline on Twitter so I might not have seen his post yeah but um yeah Aaron Aaron was such a good dude and you know the type that was fighting for uh, equality and rights in the comic world, meaning uh, comic books and that that world, fighting against. There's been a lot of um, toxicity in the comics world in the last few years, and he was always, you know, on the side of trying to push for for better standards and whatnot. And just a, a sweetheart of a guy, just funny, nice. Uh, I talked to him various times about like my art block and, and different stuff and, and, you know, just and an incredible artist too. I don't, I don't want to definitely don't want to overlook that uh, really quick. If anyone wants to go check his art out, I'll have links in the show. Well, I won't have a link, but I'll have his handle for Twitter, which was at obscure Aaron. That's Aaron, A-A-R-O-N. Um, you know, or check out the obscure gents. I believe it is on Twitter, and you can check out the the. It was mostly weekly, uh, comic that they did, and just like I said, just a, and even though I didn't know him like in real life, know him, I interacted with him in a group quite a bit on there, and and just every he's one of those guys that just everybody today I see so many comments, and all of them were just like, you know, what a loss you know, all that kind of stuff. He was just so loved by, by so many people. So that was really sad, you know, and, and I still, it kind of, it definitely bummed me out, uh, for the day. And I'm sure it's going to continue to bum me out. Cause he, like I said, he was, he was a real good dude. Um, but it was, you know, I was kind of going around today and very much, uh, you know, in a funk because, that's what happens when <laughs> and uh you know we talk on here a lot about how things kind of just fall into place sometimes when they're supposed to and whatever and uh you know i got a uh a package today and heno and i had talked about this candy company sees and he told me about this uh chocolate or i'm sorry the peanut brittle uh chocolate like covered in chocolate bars that they have. And I mentioned I had never had them and he was very much taken aback by this <laughs> <laughs> because apparently I was missing out and I opened the box today. And what's funny is I, I looked at the box and I was like, I saw who it was from and I thought someone else had sent it maybe to me because, you know, things have taken a long time to ship via Christmas, you know, because of Christmas and everything with the post office. And then I stopped and I'm like, and I swear before I even cut the tape on the box, I went, I bet Heno sent me a box of those <laughs> peanut brittle bars. And sure enough, <laughs> I opened the box. And as soon as I saw that, that's what was in it. Just ear to ear smile, because it was just so like, that's the same kind. I would have done the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. and everything. So, you know, it was just a, uh, a perfectly timed, you know, my mom always raised me to give smile gifts to people. 
which is, you know, sometimes if you happen to have something and someone admires it, like they really love it or whatever, is, you know, I'm not saying give everything or whatever to somebody, but if, if it's something that it's like, you know, maybe something that's just like meh to you, but someone else is like, oh my God, this is, you know, give it to them or buy them the same thing kind of a thing. And that just hit me today in that because that's exactly what it would have been is that would have been the the smile gift, you know. So thank you, Heno. And because uh, I just realized I don't think I said thank you earlier. <laughs> I was telling him I got it, but I don't remember if I said thank you. So I'm making <laughs> making sure 100 percent right now I'm saying it. And, uh, you know, that it was perfectly the delivery of it was perfectly timed, which I know you didn't have control over, but. It was still, it hit, it got here when it was supposed to get here, you know? Um, so, uh, that, that was definitely nice. And like I told Heno, you know, doing salty language, which I recorded before we did this, uh, you know, that, that helps kind of pick my mood back up too. Cause it's just, <sighs> just this last week I've been feeling, I've been feeling a lot of weight on my shoulders. Like the, the weight of just the world. I'm noticing it again, you know, which tells me it's time for therapy. Um, because usually that's about when I start realizing, Hey, I haven't been into therapy in a while is I start feeling literally like someone's pushing down on my shoulders. So I need to call and re reschedule that. Cause my last one got, it got canceled for reasons. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I need to call in, get that back on track here. Um, but I, I was telling Tony also, cause you know, we've talked on here how we're not, not resolution people, you know, it's like, if something's not right, make the change now or move toward making that change. You know, don't put it like, don't wait until next year to make, you know, well, you know, I'll just wait till like Tony's example was good, which was, you know, like, I'm going to, you know, I need to start flossing. Well, guess I'll wait till January. <laughs> You know, like, no, you just start flossing, you, you know. Uh, so one of the things I mentioned was I, I'm, I hate food waste. So I've always been the type that I'll eat leftovers probably a day or two long after probably shouldn't be eating them. Not that they're bad, but they're also not good anymore. <laughs> you know, like they're somewhere in that gray area. You know, you open the thing, you smell it and go, eh, and then you eat it. And it's like, I should probably, I need to quit doing that. Cause I've been noticing, I've been, as I do it, I've noticing that I'm feeling awful after doing it. So I need to make that change. But also I, you know, we went to the store yesterday and I bought so many freaking vegetables and I found some recipes that are, uh, like no meat type recipes. Cause I've been eating too much red meat, especially, and I have gout. So I shouldn't be eating a lot of, um, red meat or fatty meats. You know, I should be eating lean, uh, meat. Uh, but you know, so I, I went and found various recipes that are more packed with vegetables and, and more, uh, you know, friendly for, for how I should be eating. Also, you know, I, I just want to anyways, cause I just feel like garbage all the time when I eat garbage, go figure, you know? <laughs> so, you know, that's, I, I'm trying to enact some changes there. And, and again, it's not a resolution type of thing. It's just, a like, it's just time, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I did that. So that's basically been, been my week, you know? I was happy we went and got our picked up our groceries yesterday. I got home, did the double check and everything. Everything was actually right this time. Uh, no stress. <laughs> you know, for once, that was nice. Um, which makes sense. You know, we're past the holidays. Things have calmed down. Although the, the kid that brought the groceries out did tell me that they got a lot of orders yesterday for some reason. So. And, Interesting. Well, the only thing I can think of is it is earlier in the month slash people are getting stimulus checks. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I can see that. I can see people buying a bunch of groceries, but whatever. It all went fine. And, you know, it, it, it's like I said, it's it's pretty it's been a rough week, which Heno will 
you know, piggyback on here in a minute, I'm sure. Um, but I also found out, like, the video store I used to work at up the street, all of them in this area, the family videos, they're they're all going out of business. And it's it, it one of those things that, I don't know, there's no nostalgia or any of that kind of stuff there. But it was still, it still kind of made me sad because, first of all, that's job loss. But also, you know, I worked there for a while, and it, it was just kind of like, you know, I don't know, it's sad. But also, I mean, I'm not surprised. They're video stores. I mean, literally, the world is mostly moving past. But there's still a lot of people who don't do streaming all the time. And now their options just got smaller. Because family video is in a few states, you know. So, and like around here, that's going to leave like, what, Redbox and the library? Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anywhere else you can rent DVDs anymore. You know, uh, you can buy them, obviously, but I don't think you can rent them anywhere anymore. And like me, really, even I've I've got limited data, you know, so I I don't always stream stuff, but I also don't watch a lot of movies. So <laughs> it's not a, not that big a deal. But it was still kind of sad, you know, just they were showing they actually on the news, they were in the one I worked in and uh, well, mostly worked in and they uh you know, it, it was just weird seeing empty spots because they're selling off. It looks like they're selling off the movies and stuff. You know, it's very strange to see. Took took me back all those years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I believe it. Yeah. So there you go. That's so that's my week. Well, I'll go next, and I'll I'll let Hedel bring us off in the end. But um. So I mean, bring 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 us down. Yeah, <laughs> I know. it will be up. It will. I guarantee it. I try. I tried to set the bar low, Hanno. <laughs> it will be up. Trust me. It, it'll be worth it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Like, what do I want to talk about? There's so <laughs> many different weird things that have happened, but um, oh, okay. I guess the hi the highlights of it, um. I'm back to my regular schedule, which is a good thing. Um, you know, we had New Year's, um, which was pretty uneventful. Yep. Um, I ended up doing a Zoom with my friend, uh, with some online friends, which was fun. Um, you know, and then just getting the getting the house back in order, getting everything back in order, getting ready for this week, and then starting the the work week and as part of the new year, um, I came, you know, my co-host, podcast co-host, and I came to the conclusion that it would be probably a good time to just take a step back. So um, I found myself with some free time on my hands, and now I've got to find myself a new project. So I'm kind of been bouncing around some different ideas, trying to figure out what I want to do. And I, nothing has solidified 100% yet. Um, I am working with a little bit with a person online um, with about some music. Um, he wanted some help with lyrics and in um, and just basically some songs he's writing. And he wanted a, a second opinion. So I'm going to be jumping in and helping out a little bit with that and see how that goes. So kind of dabble a little bit of that. Um, and I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of in this like transition place and just trying to figure things out and trying to be okay with it. And not to mention, so we've got all this, it's weird because I've got change happening, but I also have normalcy and routine that are kind of, just it's weird it, i'm just kind of in a weird, weird what i think right is now. what i think is funny is literally you just described balance because <laughs> you're like My things are crazy but things are also very calm <laughs> you know really freaky. yeah it's just interesting how you like i said you you essentially are like you know i i'm 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 crazy uh, you know going yeah. you know through changes but also things are the same so it's like well that seems okay <laughs> you know so it is funny though uh 
how I can understand that it feels weird though, because things have not been in a uh, balance or calm for a little bit, you know. Well, and that's also, I am starting to see a negative effect of being isolated. And that's um, like today I went to the grocery store and almost had an anxiety attack leaving the house. Yeah. And just, which is not usual for me. I mean, right. I, I do get anxiety attacks for re- and randomness, but um, it's not, traditionally I don't have a problem leaving the house to go to the grocery store. But I just think it's because I'm in the house 24 seven all the time and I'm getting way too comfortable and accustomed to never leaving. Mm -hmm. So it's starting to really starting to affect me. And I did talk to my psychiatrist uh, last time we talked about that. And he, um, we've already talking about putting a plan in place, um, a medicinal plan in place to ramp things up a little bit Mm -hmm. as I have to start going back in the office because we're just proactively just pay, you know, that's smart planning. Yep. Yeah. To just have that plan in place. And all I have to do is call the doctor's office and they will adjust things for me. Right. So it would be nice and easy and simple, um, which is really cool. So uh, already just kind of really trying to think ahead and stay on top of it to make sure that um, that I don't I don't do any spirals. I mean that's the key. Yeah. Just really want to stay away from the big spirals. Um, and then I I'm taking um I've gone back on my diet since I kind of took a couple weeks off for the holidays. She almost have to honestly with the holidays. Yeah sure. But I'm back to low low sugar low carb it's a variation on a keto diet um so i'm back doing that and i have adjusted because i'm having i have sleep issues for those that i think everyone's pretty much heard me talk about it on the show but for those that aren't in the know um my i have uh my family has this thing where we sleep a lot and fall asleep a lot I think I mentioned it on the last last podcast. Um, so my psychiatrist mentioned going and getting a sleep study done. Yeah. Well, on top of going and getting a sleep study done, which I will be doing, um, I just got to get with my general practitioner and get that all set up. Um, I've decided to take a look at other things that I can do to help put me on a more traditional sleep cycle. Mm. So I've actually cut back on my caffeine and uh, I'm doing half calf, um, two cups of half calf in the morning. And that's it. As far as caffeine is concerned. By the um, way, I, not- I got to commend you for doing it that way rather than being the way that people seem to want to do this now, which is instead of cutting back on caffeine and stimulants, they are more likely to just, well, I'm going to take melatonin or z or I'm going to do all these other things. And it's like, have you tried the other way first? <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Can't give up my caffeine. Like, I realized we had gone too far as a society when they put out calming water for people to drink before bed. The, the, and I'm like, okay, quit shotgunning the Red Bulls and coffees all day. And, you you know, you might be able to sleep a little easier. <laughs> And that's and it's the weird part because I, I have the opposite of um you know issue that um, most people do because most people when they complain about sleep they're complaining about not being able to sleep and yeah. having insomnia and and things like that right like me and I'm yeah I'm yeah. quite the opposite um so um I am trying to manage my caffeine intake manage my sugar intake try to keep my system on a fairly level playing field and not have spikes or crashes um, because that's part of it was the crashing um, after the caffeine and sugar wears off Mm -hmm. that I think was causing me to get drowsy and fall asleep easily. Mm -hmm. It's part of, you know, one of the factors anyways. So I started doing that and then I'm forcing myself to stay up to, 11 because my my goal is to sleep 11 to 6 traditionally in the past i've been getting up around 
three thirty to four thirty, mm. and that's just too darn early. So I'm really trying to refocus my body around eleven to six. If I can get eleven to six down, I'd be happy. Um, so it's, it's a work in progress. You know, some days are easier than others. Um, staying busy up until the, the late night for me anyways, late night, um, is not easy. Usually I fall asleep on the couch around eight. Um, but I'm trying yeah. and I think there'll be good days and bad days, but I'm, I'm getting there. So like I said, there's a lot of just got to start yeah. doing the, like What's when you doing? feel yourself getting sleepy time, you know, stand up and do like 15 jumping jacks, you know, get some blood pumping. <laughs> Get that blood pumping, get the brain working. Or better yet, this time of year, just go outside for a little bit. <laughs> that would wake me up. That'll wake you up. <laughs> Absolutely. So, but that's about all I've got going on. So, Hanno, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, it's been a week. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to start with saying how grateful I am for my sobriety the tools that I've been given this podcast, my friends, unbelievable, my friends. You know, not, I had on Saturday, I had somebody that, I mean, our entire Valley knows he does all the sound for all the shows that we do that. I mean, if it's a, if it's a little tiny little club a rock club or a giant concert. Craig always did the sound. He's just, he's, and he's, he was a sober brother and he passed. I mean, he'd been battling with cancer and, and he passed on Saturday. And then I had another friend that I found out had also cancer. And then, you know, they were trying to go fund me and boom, had a massive stroke on Sunday and was gone on Monday or Tuesday. And again, it's, these are not people that I go like, you know, call them on the phone and say, Hey, how you, you know, but they're, they're, they're people I've, I'm, I see them regularly. Well, not so much Gail because I don't, we, we live in other States, but it was like, you know, you stay connected online and stuff. And, and on top of that, I lost my best buddy. Yeah. And it was, it I've been preparing for transition in my life since my dad died and I knew that Jax was going to be next. Yeah. And, but I didn't know that it was going to be this week. Right. I figured, you know, he's a Havanese. Havanese are, are a different breed. Most dogs love being dogs. You know, <laughs> dogs for the most part, they love to eat. They love affection. They love to play. They love being dogs. Yeah. Havanese love their people. Mm -hmm. And it's not just one person. It's everybody that they can love. And they're just different in that way. Yeah. And um, this was my first dog. They typically live to be about 12 to 15. He was nine. It was early. Yeah. He had a procedure last week. It, this had nothing to do with it. He was fine after the procedure, the two days. And then Sharon had him on a walk and he suddenly had poop that was basically red. It was, it was, it was bloody. That's not unusual for animals. He wouldn't eat. He threw up. Throwing up was just clear. There are gastric things that happen with dogs. Unfortunately, it was New Year's Day and you know, it's an emergency run to the, to the vet. And also with COVID, you can't go in. You basically hand your animal off and that's that. And so we chose to monitor him and he was very distressed all night long. And he was doing the thing where he would go outside and he was just staying outside and it's freezing cold outside. And a lot of that was, he was pulling himself out of this household. Um, I kept bringing him back in. I eventually shut the door. You know, I'm like, I need to go to sleep. And if you, you know, do whatever you do in the house is fine. He was very much in distress. But mm -hmm. by the next morning, he'd mellowed out. And I called the vet and they, you know, I described all the symptoms. And they said, well, and again, they were just assuming that it was this gastric thing. And they said, you know, try some rice. I'm like, you won't eat. I'm like, go get some broth. I'm like, okay. So I got a broth. I had a dropper. I was giving him broth. 
And at some point he got up, you know, he was, he was very relaxed. I got a pain pill on him because I had painkillers from the procedure and he was very relaxed. He actually got up and drank some water, didn't throw up. And then I looked over and he was twitching and he was just limp and I could, he was unresponsive and he just crashed and he died in my arms two blocks away from the house. Aww. You know, and I'm glad I went to the vet because the vet said s- something happened. And, but it was so hard not to beat myself up, even though I, I was ready for this. I even last, the, the Sunday before the procedure, knowing that there was a procedure, I, I, you know, had a cry with him and told him how much I loved him and you know, just have that moment because anything could happen. Yeah. I just didn't think it was going to be that day. Yeah, no doubt, man. You know, and um, and our topic for tonight is going to be about that the guilt and and beating myself up. And I mean, oh my God, I was so hard, my anxiety and just the fight or flight and the, the you know, especially with the guilt and everything. Like, what should we have done? And and so difficult to remember the you know it's the second guessing and mm-hmm. you know woulda coulda should us yeah. and you know um we're gonna link to a, a psychology today article that sharon found and you know one of the things that is in here it's like the uh we don't get that opportunity to prepare always for an you know for the loss of an animal and sometimes it's unexpected and it can be tragic, you know, especially with accidents. And th- that's even the worst. I got onto a, a friend sent me a, a, a link to a group, which is a, um, a grief group for um, animal loss, for people who have lost animals, any animals, any amount of time. It doesn't matter whether it happened yesterday or years ago. And it was the greatest thing. It was also the saddest thing when someone came up and said that they're, they lost their best buddy on New Year's Day. And it was her own fault. Hmm. And, and it's like, what do you, you know, what do you say? Yeah. Except uh, all I could do is share what we had been, what we had been going through. Right. I was like my mom, when she, the one, when like the cat we have now, when she got him, she got the, a brother and sister cats. And we still have Callie, the female um, Lobo, the male uh, died and it wasn't long after that like there had been a recall on the cat food she had bought and that was what they found out was that basically the cat food was killing like that that animals were dying from it you know and so I, I've seen this part of it in that aspect as well of my mom beating herself up for you know like well the food I gave him is what killed him you know and, and stuff so it's it's so brutal to go through and see somebody go through that part of the process of beating yourself up for something that, you know, you just can't help it. You know, we do it with humans too. I did it after my dad died. You know, I was sleeping when, when he died and it's like, well, if I hadn't gone to bed early that night or, you know, and it's, there's a lot of those things that can kind of live with you for a while. Yeah. And that this, like this article talks about incomplete endings. Yeah in that regard and you know the word the support word for grief is finding closure right but it's very complicated when it's an incomplete experience right because yep. very complicated grief arises when mm-hmm. the the grief is not easy to close and this particular article talks about that that he challenges that notion because sometimes you can't experience closure yeah before experiencing the death of a pet now to a to a degree i did in that i was accept i was becoming accepting of transition but there's a big difference between knowing that you know your 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 pet is getting old or a parent is is struggling with their health and you know a pet gets hit by a car or a sudden illness happens. Mm-hmm. And one of the things, and this ties into what you just talked about, Brian, is this article says pets are biologically programmed to hide their pain. But it's more of that idea of like, you know, 
uh, dogs are, you know, the, the, the dog, well, we've all seen dogs that are, that are, you know, three leg yeah. or, you know, they hurt a leg. They're running on the other three leg. It's no big deal. Mm-hmm. They, they can't tell us. They can sometimes, but they can't tell us necessarily that they're in pain. And they're also, like I said, it was great to read this. Like they're predisposed to hide their pain. And that's because they have a job to do. And it doesn't matter if they're cold, if they're hungry, or if they're in pain, they need to get their job done. And so a lot of times diseases happen and it's too late before you catch it. And the same thing happens with humans. You can have a, um, I, I know someone who lost a parent. He was an avid tennis player into his 70s. He was used to being sore all the time. And so he discounted the pain that ended up being actual cancer. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing. And then, and then by the time it was like, like, well, you know what? This feels unusual. It was too late. Yeah. And so there's these great places for blame. And that's where I was in with this. And this article talks about the grief process of trying to make sense of the experience. And I, to me, it was to blame myself for it, that I didn't do enough and that, and I couldn't, you know, the, the truth is I could only do the best with what I knew. And in the case of our animals, sometimes it's difficult if they don't tell us. And that's what a friend of mine told me, said, Jax had something wrong that he couldn't let you know was wrong. Yeah. There could have been something in there. There were, you know, and the, even though the symptoms in this case could have been horrible, but there also were, were a common symptom. And I had to get through that. And I couldn't imagine when I when I connected with this person in this Facebook group about the idea that that you know what she uh, wasn't paying attention. The dog saw uh, a squirrel and chased it across the street, and the squirrel got killed. Hmm. You know, she didn't plan for that to happen. Right. She didn't plan to not pay attention to her her, her beloved pet, and then something bad happened. She didn't plan that, and. You know, there's also the idea of like um, a runaway, you know, if a pet runs away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no closure there. No. Especially if you never find them. Yep. Been Absolutely. There. My first so, cat, that's what happened. My first cat either was ran, either ran away or someone grabbed her and took her, one or the other. And, yeah. Or him, I should say. My first cat was a male. And, you know, never, it just, it, it killed me as a little kid. You know, because you yeah. just you don't know where they went, and my parents can't, you know, you they can't logic it away because they don't know. You know, yeah. there's there's just like you said, there's no closure there other than the closure is that it's gone. Yep, and, and that's it. Yep, and so th- there's blame that goes with that, and it all ends up becoming what if scenarios, right? And you know, and then it becomes. You know, especially like with the euthanasia, you know, did I make the right decision? You know, should I have another, you know, I wish I had one more day or noticed something sooner or whatever it is. And all of that guilt does nothing for, you know, it just, it, it, like in this case, it was just amping me up and I could feel the fight or flight feelings, that anxiety, my skin tingling, my brain firing in ways that I knew was out of balance. And this was the worst of it was when I dwelled on what happened and especially the trauma. The trauma happened when I realized I was losing him. Yeah. Yeah. And there was nothing I could do. He yeah. stopped breathing yeah. and I panicked and I was yelling his name and I, you know, I grabbed a flashlight and just pupils and I'm like, there's nothing. He's, he's crashing and he's not breathing. And then he released, you know, in the car. Yeah. And I, I knew then, I mean, and I was in that moment, I couldn't leave it. And it just, and when I went to that moment, the feelings were even worse. Like it was already, you know, I knew I, you know, I'm going to feel sad, but this was horrible. It felt terrible. Yeah, because you feel help, it was, helpless in that moment. And now I'm blaming myself. Right. Yeah. So what happened? It took like articles like this for me to realize that, you know, there are things I couldn't know. Mm-hmm. I can't blame myself for not knowing what I knew. 
Right. And I knew I needed to reframe this. I knew I needed to reframe this in some way. And I had one friend said, you know, Jack's died of natural causes. Yeah. Then, yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. I mean, cancer is a natural cause too. Yeah. yeah. I would actually argue a dog chasing a squirrel and something tragic happens is kind of a natural cause. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, I know. You know Not I, traditional, you know, but yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's and the, a dog being a dog. You know, yeah, and, yeah, and Jack's and, – and yes, it was my fault the time that I went out to the car without a leash on him, and he bolted across the street after a rabbit and almost got hit by a car. Yeah. That part of it was my fault. It wasn't Jack's fault. Yeah. He was being a dog, right. and he was reacting. Mm-hmm. And But still, if he got hit by the car, I would be blaming myself. Oh, How totally. could I reframe it? Well, one oh. way to reframe it is, is like, well, he was, you know, he did what he, you know, he did what a, a dog could do. And that's my, for my thing was always like, it's my responsibility to keep him safe. And what do I do? I've always been, I've always taken him to the vet. I've always done everything I could to keep him healthy. The procedure he had last week was everything to keep him healthy. And here he was dying of a health thing. I should have been able to keep him healthy, but that's not that's not the case. Yeah. And when the vet came out that was there, the attending, you know, it was the weekend, he came out and he just said, you know, it sounds like something happened inside that nobody could know about. And that took him down fast. The only thing that the vet did did say, I said, well, he was nine years old. And then he's like, well, he's a little young. I'm like, oh, thanks. You didn't need to hear that one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, because literally some of the stuff you were just explaining about, like, like my last cat that when when she died, you know, I woke up and I because she was making a weird sound and I looked over and she was having a seizure. Yeah. You know, and and I'm like, oh, my God, you know, and I went over and I'm petting her and I'm trying to calm her down because I, I in my brain, I knew it was a seizure, you know, but I was also like, well, maybe she's just freaking out or something. So I'm I'm talking to her and I did the same kind of stuff, you know, but in the end, you know, we we lost her, but she was, what was she, 23 or 22? You know what I mean? So it was a little different there to where they were like, well, she had a yep. really long life, you know, and it's that yeah. feels more comforting than when someone goes, oh, their life got cut short. And you're like, oh, like you said, oh, gee, thanks. You know, like, I feel great yep. about that. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, he did bring up that Jackson had a lot of surgeries. <laughs> You know, for a little dog, yeah. two knee replacements, teeth removals, you know, I mean, a lot of stuff. And we don't know what those things do. So that was, you know, the, the fact of the matter was, is I was getting into a ruminating cycle. And that's something that, you know, that this article talks about. And I'm just the one part I'm going to read. It says, when it comes to complicated grief, our lives are severely impacted in a negative fashion. Individuals can barely focus on daily activities and tasks, let alone meeting basic needs and maintaining relationships. We are stuck in a ruminative or repeating cycle that burdens us further and further into our grief experience and associated pain. And I'm telling you, I was right there. I was right there. I had all of those feelings, and it was extremely painful. And then – and Sharon was feeling it too. We were both – just we were killing ourselves yeah i bet and it was time to break that cycle and luckily i was able to text my boss and i said i know i'm supposed to have next week off jack's just died i'd like to have this week off and they said yes even and james said would you like me to cover you on sunday and i said yes i would like that very much and i needed that i needed to and then i needed to get into the work of 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 grieving and this is where i'm tying in with with my power word for last week attack and that's what i did i spent a lot of time on the phone with my friends they were very gracious to listen to me and to talk with me you know talk through this help me with those tips you know like natural this was natural causes this was jack's day to die i didn't know it but it was his day yeah and i got to be there right and well, like I took, when well, you and I talking about it, when we talked on the phone and, you yeah. know, we were talking about how much like I mentioned earlier in the episode about being right where you're supposed to be, you know, and well, like yeah. you mentioned, I hadn't even considered about how you wouldn't have been able to go in with him to the vet and yeah. that stuff. And I'm like, oh, God, just the, the heartbreak of knowing like because like my cat, I I couldn't 
I couldn't go in the room with her. My mom went in with her because this, she was just kept having seizures and I, I was just losing it. And, uh, you know, and I'm thinking of myself in that moment. I'm like, oh God, he would have been, you know, the same situation kind of, you would have been in a separate room while whoever, whatever's happening. And, you know, and I hadn't considered that. And it's like, God, he was right where he should have been. He was right there. He was with you. Yeah. Right where yeah. he always was with you. Yes. Always. Right. And just, and that's yeah. what he was doing. He was lying in the hallway. It just at, yeah. at rest, not in pain, not in distress at peace. And yet. I just wanted to feel sad for him or for, for us. I just wanted to feel sad. I wonder, but I couldn't, I kept yeah. getting into the, this, this horrible, complicated grief and it hurt so bad and I couldn't sleep. It's just, I would wake up and it was the first thing on my head. And I mean, it was, it was really bad yeah. and you know, didn't want to eat all, all the classic things. Sure. The the crying, every, everything about it. Well, this is why I'm grateful. I was able to find acceptance pretty much by the end of that day. I wasn't 100%, but I found acceptance that this was, this was the best thing that could have happened. Yeah. Could I have taken him to the vet earlier and he could have maybe survived this? Maybe. Could he have ended up at the vet getting better and then still crashed and died? by himself in a kennel without me or in a vet tech's arms. Yes. And I would not have chosen that. Yeah. If I were to, if I had the opportunity to choose how Jax was going to leave slip away, I would want it this way. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, and in all yeah. fairness, it's one of those, I know these kind of statements are the ones that people make all the time, but it is one of the times where I really feel like it's true which is, I feel like that's how he would have wanted to go, you know? Yeah, well, that's, yeah. yeah. You know? And, he wouldn't, and, and here's the bottom line, and this is, uh, this is what, I'm forgetting his name, Adam mentions in the article. How do our animals want us to be? Happy, not in grief, not in yeah. pain, yeah. not blaming ourselves. They want us to be happy, and it's the part of, of the AA program. I, another, literally, another sober friend posts, posts on Facebook that he had to put his dog down. The day after what happened to Jax. And I just sat there and I'm just like, I hate the fact that I can feel, I know your pain right now. Yeah. I hate it. Right. But I said, I know that both of our boys wanted us to be happy, joyous, and free. And I use those terms because that's, that's a sobriety thing in, yeah. in AA is that God wants us to be happy, joyous, and free. Yeah. And that's about reframing even the, you know, we all love to, to, take the you know we call the god shot or the the miracle moment when it's good news but we don't take the miracle moment out of oh, bad news yep, you're right and the fact of the matter is is when 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 it really comes down to it there are miracles and there are gifts and their learning experiences in good good news and in bad news if we choose to find it and one of the ways to choose to find it is to realize that my natural state is to be happy joyous and free and so i i had a journey to get on i i I attacked this. And I got to say, I can 100% vouch for you on that in that, what what was it, the next day I talked to you or was it the same day? I don't remember now. It was uh, later that night. Okay. You were already attacking it at that point. Like I, when you and I were talking, I was like in my head a lot of, I was like, wow, he's, you, you mentioned at one point to me that you were in a place of acceptance and you know, a lot of people will say and do that kind of stuff, you know, like, oh, yeah, yeah I'm fine. I'm doing great, you know, yeah. but you can tell they're not. But, you know, you're just yeah. like, whatever, I'm going to just let you be. But hearing you talking about it and I was like, he really is like, this is hmm. awesome because, look, I, I, it's going to hurt forever, you know, like there's no whatever. But it was like I, I was glad that you were also in a point that it was like. This sucks, but I I can I, I'll be okay, kind of a thing, yeah. you know. Like, and it's always good when people can find that. Some people, you know, we've talked on here about grieving before, about how you know it takes you the time it takes you to grieve, you know. And but it was still, but I, like I said, I can one hundred percent vouch that you were already doing the work pretty quick. 
you know, and I don't mean that in any way to sound like you were cold or anything about it. You know, it, it was just very much, no, I could some tell. Of it, like I'd already prepared. You were in a place of gratitude as well, because you were very much, I'm glad I had him. I'm glad this, you know, I was where I was, yeah. you know, you were very, yeah. I, it felt again, I'm no counselor, therapist, trained professional, but it felt like you were <laughs> in a really healthy mindset right there, you know, for, for a lot of it. And obviously, you know, you know, like I said, I, you're, you know, beating yourself up, blaming yourself. That's all natural and stuff. But I also felt like you were, you were also being very kind to yourself and the situation as well. I don't know if you saw that, but I saw that. So that was, you know. and that, yeah, that was part of the, the idea of this is okay. I, I'm going to go to work and I'm just going to be useless there uh, and I'll beat myself up for that. So I'm going to be kind to myself. I'm going to give myself this time. And, you know, one of the things that you can do for, is healthy distractions, right? And sometimes for people working is a healthy distraction. I know, I know that, that if that it, a distraction was just going to prolong this. Yeah. I know I needed to be in it and and I needed to find – I needed to process this, and I needed yeah. to get out of the really horrible negative feelings and get into what I would consider acceptable in-the-moment feelings of sadness, which is how I'm supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. And Sharon and I worked really hard on this, and by the next day, it was getting better, and it was – of course, it was waves – and we put a lot of these tools to work that are in this article and it, you know, reframing things, putting them in terms that, and, and being kind to myself and not beating myself up and reaching out to professionals. Sharon reached out to a professional who reminded her that dogs live in the moment. Yeah. They're in the moment. That's so true. They, they really are. They don't, they don't care about what happened the day before or, or the next day. <laughs> They're just in their moment. You can feed them. The food that they absolutely love or give them treats. And two seconds later, if you offer it they again, they're like, oh, my God. They're not like, no, you know what? I just had. I just had. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, sure. let's let's wait. Yeah. I'll, I'll see how I feel in a few. No, it's like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one that can't live in the moment. And so one of the things that helped me, I said, oh, you know what? Jax was in a moment and he was OK. He knew where he was. And and he would want me to be in the moment, and and that moment is is not regretting what happened. It's in the moment that I'm in today, which is he's gone. Yeah, and that's okay. We went for we took and Bogart's still here. We took Bogart for yeah. a walk, and one of the things I said is I can't look at those two dog beds in the window, so I can't you know, and yeah. so I removed them. I understand. Well, we went that. on the walk, yeah. and I went, I went. You know what? Jax is here. Jax is here. That dog bed's going back in that window, and I put the dog bed back in the window, mm -hmm. and then I sat down, and I was hanging out on the couch with Bogart laying on me, and all of a sudden, there was this loud noise, and feathers started falling everywhere outside the window, and I'm not just talking like a couple feathers fall down. Yeah. There were feathers everywhere, big ones, little ones, little soft ones, huh. and I – and. And I sat there, I was like, whoa, and it's mixed in with the snow. And Sharon comes, you know, when I told Sharon about it, Sharon has this thing that feathers represent angels. Yeah, I I was going to say, I was thinking that, but I also know other people who have that, yep. you know, who, who feel that way too. So, yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, okay, I choose to see this. I mean, here I am where Jax used to look at the squirrels with me. And she went out and took a picture of it, and we posted it on Facebook, and it was it was unbelievable the response we got from it. Yeah. Later the next day, I was going out to feed the squirrels, and I was walking back in, and Jax used to sit on the front the, on the back porch. And when I when I came back towards the house, he jumped through the dog door, and as I opened the dog door, I saw him running in to the kitchen, you know, looking back at me like, you know, what's next? What are we doing next? You know, because he was always on, he was on alert, and I saw a flash when I opened that door. And it was – the visual of it was so strong and powerful, it absolutely took me back. And I was just right then and there. I was like, okay, it is what they say. You know, like everyone loves to throw up these cute little stuff about like they never leave us. Their spirit is with yeah, us. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? Jax is here. Yeah. It is and wild how how we, we see some of this stuff. And I'm not saying like – you know, there is probably some like um, – we see what we want to see to some That's of these it. things. Right. 
But there is sometimes where there's like you said with the feathers or there's just, just sometimes there's things that happen and you're just like, all right, that's, that's too weird. Like, here's a great one years ago at, at when I had a comic shop, my friend Scott, we had a wall in the building and when we moved in, we asked if we could move the wall, like tear the wall down. And my friend Scott's a carpenter. And we, you know, I was like, he's a licensed carpenter. I'll have him build the wall further back. So we have more floor space that's open. Right. They said, sure. His brother helped him. And you know, his, his brother died in a car accident later that year, I think it was, or early next year, whichever it was. And, uh, the, the door, to the thing kept opening like when I went back you know in there and and you know Spence had helped him hang that door and I'm standing there and I was just laughing because I remember Spence making fun of Scott about the door because he said the door was there was something about it he said wasn't quite right or something and I'm in there and I'm by myself and that door just opens like just comes undone and I go over and I shut it I'm moving around, doing other stuff in the shop. Door opens again. And I'm like, all right, Spence, knock it off. And I shut, you know, joking, kind of, I shut the door. It never did it again. Like, I never saw it do it again. And it was one of those moments that it was probably just coincidence. Maybe when I pulled the door shut, maybe I, adjust, you know, you yeah. know, moved the thing a little bit. Yeah. And now it, it clicks right. Who knows? But yeah. it was just funny how it was. Just one of those that I said that, and then the rest of the day it didn't do it, and I was just just shaking my head at it because yeah. it's whether it was a sign or not, whatever. I chose to see it as one, you know, and that's all that matters, you know. Yeah, and that's like I have a friend that says that says uh, coincidences are God's way of being anonymous, of remaining anonymous. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, and sure. <laughs> More than likely, a dove slammed into the freaking tree, right? Or my that's, roof. That's what I was or thinking. I, is it sounded or I hope like he didn't get killed, you know, by a hawk? Yeah, I know? was thinking it sounded like a movie when, like, a bird or something hits something, and you just oh, see yeah. feathers scatter, and just yeah. fly everywhere, like out of a cartoon. You yeah, know, that's really what happened. But you know what? <laughs> You know, I I knew that I was going to look in the front window and see Jax in that bed. Right. It's just funny, right. isn't it? Like if you could turn the, the viewpoint, right, and see it with yeah. like the wall of your house down the middle, yeah. right? You're yeah, inside. Exactly. You see the feathers and you're in awe. Yeah. On the outside, there's this bird slamming into the house. So and like, and that, having a catastrophic day. <laughs> yeah. The neighbor across the street just went, ooh, yeah. ow, that oh. had to hurt. And I'm inside going, wow, <laughs> Jax. That, that's such you know a what? great framing of, of literally perspective, though, right? It On is. one side of the wall, that's a terrible day. On the other side of the wall, it was yep. such a comforting moment. <laughs> yep, exactly. And this, is, and this is where I'm getting with this is, is – we talk about on the show all the time about the inside job. It's yeah. our choice. It's my choice how I want to act and react. And I want to act in a way that makes me joyous, happy, happy joyous and free that where I don't beat myself up, where I allow myself the opportunities to feel what I need to feel, but not in a way that's debilitating. Mm. And, and you know, the, that's so well the, written. Right. Yeah. And, Yes, these things made me sad and, and cry, but today, today, my friend Kiki's over here, and there happened to be this big old chunk of a squirrel hanging out on one of my new feeders, hanging upside down, like doing this thing with his feet, and, and I, just, I just bumped her, and I pointed. I didn't say anything. I just pointed, and she looked outside the window, and all of a sudden, she stopped, and she said, I just heard Jax. <laughs> uh -huh. She heard him bark yeah. like he did. Yeah. Right? Because that's what he did. Y'all who have listened to The Crazy Life have heard Jack's barking. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's what he did when there was a squirrel, and Kiki heard it in her head, and I just smiled. It yeah. didn't make me sad. Right. And one of the things that bummed me out the most is I didn't get one of his paw prints. He had the cutest little paws. Mm. And today, when I opened the mail, was the condolence letter from the animal hospital. They took his paw print. Yeah. Oh. I saw. I just... I happened to have, while we were talking, I got a message from someone because of Aaron on Instagram. And when I went to it, that was the picture that showed up when I opened Instagram. So that's and so we awesome. Cried, and yeah. it was the, but it was a good cry. 
Oh, totally. It was a happy cry. Yeah. And over the last few nights, it's gotten easier to sleep. It, it, you know, I still wake up a lot, but it's easier. I actually have, nor- um, you know, the, as the days have gone by, the, I've actually have dreams coming back again, and I don't feel wired every minute. And I'm glad I've taken the time to grieve. One night, Sharon and I finally sat down and went through like the, you know, like, like we talked about the history of how I got Jackson, how we got Bogart, and I looked at photos and I looked at, you know, and, and, and it felt like it's supposed to feel. And one of the things I said, and this is why I promised you this is going to end on an up, <laughs> yep. is I said a friend of mine one time lost their dog and had a puppy within like two days. Yeah. And some people were a little like, what are you doing? And I went, you know what? That makes sense to me. Yeah. And it's because... funny because before we recorded, I, Heno and I were talking and I mentioned that same thing. I'm like, some people are the types that they lose a pet like that day. They're like, I got to get another one. And then there's other people that are like, eh, let's give it some time. Let's heal. Let's, you know, whatever. And and I was like, but I can't blame either side. Like, I totally yeah. get it either way, yeah. whatever you decide. It did. It did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, yeah. And I saw a lot of people in this grief group talking about how long they waited before they got another pet. And you know what? Every single one of them, and not just that group, but another group, the Savanese group, every one of them said I shouldn't have waited. They all said that because, well, you have the, the people were posting and asking honest questions like, well, you know, like, what if I'm just going to be replacing them or what if I'm going to just be reminded of them or what if I what if I they're just I'm going to be measuring them against yeah. each other, you know, and, right. and the response was, is like you don't sure they have similarities. Yeah, but everyone's well, every animal's its own individual and we all appreciate them for who they yeah, are. Exactly. You know, and 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 so I decided that. And I'd already talked to Jax about this. I told him that when he became an old man, there was going to be a little youngster coming in because I knew Jax would be the, <laughs> Jax is the welcoming committee, right? He's yeah. the cheerleader. Right, right. He was going to bring the way he was with Bogart. I knew he would be, he wouldn't think he's being replaced. I know Jax would welcome the new little pup in and take care of him and be nurturing like he was. And, and, Sharon last night was already starting to look for new animals, and I wasn't sure if I wanted a new Havanese, you know, Havanese again, or a Frenchie, or a rescue, or whatever it was going to be. And Sharon suddenly showed me a video of this little chunky black puppy with one white paw, and told me a story about how this person had just lost her father, and you know, and just I'm like, this is all of a sudden it's like, no, this is a real person. I want I want her phone number. I reached out. I got her phone number. We talked, and I made a deposit today, and and on little Benito, <laughs> Benny, and in two weeks we're going to be picking up a French bulldog, and <clears throat> Jax is going to be with us the whole time we go there and pick him up, and Jax is going to welcome him to the house. <laughs> Now, Bogart, on the other hand, might not do so good with the puppy. You know? <laughs> We're going to have to work that one out. Yeah. But I know Jax is going to be here in spirit, and and Benny is not replacing Jax. Right. But I'll tell you, I needed that energy today, the excitement. Yeah. And Because one of the things I've been doing is at least, even though I'm at home, I'm trying to get up and do some stuff. Uh, honestly, I don't want to do anything. You sure. know, I have a podcast I need to, to edit, I you know, and I just told him, look, I'll get it edited when it's ready. You know, there's things I need to do, and I'm just like, I'm just going to do them when they're ready. I've been going out and at least getting some exercise and doing some snow removal. And, like, today I was out there blowing some snow, and I thought, you know, for the last three or so days, I've just been consumed with 24-hour thoughts of of my pet. And while I was out there snow blowing, and I, and I, I thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? Usually when I'm snow blowing, I'm not thinking about the animals in the house. I'm not. Yeah. And I wasn't today. I was out snow blowing. And when I'm doing something, I'm usually – I'm not thinking about my animals. Yeah. And I was like, wow, no wonder – I mean it was just like giving perspective on how the how grief works that suddenly we're taking from – sure, we, we interact with our, our pets and our animals a certain amount of hours a day, but it's not all day long. And here, all of a sudden, that's all we're thinking about Yeah. for 24 hours right? because of the grief – and then we have these things where our body is in this fight or flight mechanism. And so we've got all this adrenaline coursing and we can't sleep. So what do we do? We think about our animals yep. some more. And then we start beating ourselves up and then all yep. these things. It's the anxiety depression uh, cycle. 
is what yeah, it is. This, yep. It really is. Yep. And you know, I'm going to still have some waves. But I am so excited to meet Benny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and awesome. and I love Jax. And yeah, there'll be times where I will think about something about the traumatic day and and I will feel some guilt. Yep. And I will what off a little bit, but you know what? It won't last very long. Yeah. And it's gotten better every single day. And these tools work. Yeah. And that's where I want to end is these art. This article here has links to all sorts of things about grief. There are groups that I've interacted with. That's why I started this by saying thank you for the crazy life because. Well, I it's love all the things that we talk about. It's everything we talk about. Reach out to people, reach out to groups, talk to a professional, Sharon, talk to a professional. Yeah. Whatever help you can get, get it. And in and in the end, in the end, it's really it's our own choice. It was my choice how I wanted to feel about this. And as even though I'm still sad, I feel good. Yeah. I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now, and I feel right sized for the situation. Awesome. Well, I love like when you and I talked to like when you mentioned about how you were talking about how you had a podcast to edit and yeah. you were like, yeah, I ain't, you know, I ain't doing it, you know? And you're like, I could do a podcast right now, you know, like, and it was, that's why I had thought about earlier in the day. I, I had thought about mentioned like, Hey, do you, you know, do you need or want to jump on Skype and, and talk for a little bit or anything or on the phone or, you know? And then I was, and, and I'm just like, ah, he's not going to want it, you know? And I'm not thinking about the fact that, through your sobriety and your men's groups and all this, you really do talk about like that it in much like I've gotten to be after, you know, going through, you know, going to therapy is this is how we process now, like doing podcasts, going to therapy, talking is how we're processing. Now we're, we're built, we've built ourselves to deal with whatever we're dealing with in life via talking. You know, whereas it it's it was weird because it, I I had that moment of I was like oh there's some of that that built in machismo that just won't go away of the you know just bury it you know no nah, he's not gonna want to talk you know eh, he's a, you know kind of a thing and it's like no the hell's wrong with you of course he wants to you know he would want to talk because we're friends he wants to talk. That's who he is. That's who you are. That's, you know, like that's, yep. and, and it was a weird situation where I kind of recognized that too, you know? Um, and I was like, you know, in my head, I'm going, okay, you know, pin in this, because if this happens again, you remind yourself that this isn't who we are anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That, and and like I had a, a, a my weekly service opportunity, which I hadn't done in a while. And it and and she contacted me. She said, "You want to get together yeah. today?" And the old me would have just been like, "Oh, I can't do it." You know, like I can't do this. The new me said, "That's this is the part of what like this article is talking about is try to to feel something normal. Try to feel." You know, to have a, a healthy distraction. What's healthier than sitting down and, and helping somebody else? Yeah, exactly. And working with somebody else. Yeah. Right? And 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 it is, you know, I, I want to read this last paragraph. It's like, if you take no other advice from this post, remember that grief is a moment-to-moment -moment process. It can be too hard to ask for even a day at a time, as a day can seem endless when we are in the midst of our grief. Remember that in this moment and with every emotion, our body is processing through its grief. It can be very hard to take care of ourselves during our experience in pet loss, even painful, but it's important to try. And that was the thing that Sharon and I kept talking about is let's try. Let's get through this. And here's another one. Like I had a bit of a maudlin thought at one point where I said, you know, Jack made a sacrifice to bring us closer together. And it's, it's not – he didn't make a sacrifice. However, but this is a beautiful thing. I got to experience why I got married. Yeah. yeah. I didn't get married for financial breaks. Right. I didn't get married for monogamy in my case. Yeah. But I did get married to have someone to go through the hardest time in my life. I, it, it has yeah. been. I mean, my father, it 
I knew it was going to hurt me, but I knew this was going to hurt more just because of who Jax was. Yeah. And this is why I got married and we have communicated and we have been open and we have gone through this process together. Awesome. And it has been the most beautiful thing to, to have that. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. That's, this is why I made that. And then one last thing I'm going to um, Bogart uh, some of Brian's usual ending. However, if feelings of suicide do emerge and you feel like you're being unsafe, please know that there is always help available and people that care at the National Suicide Hotline, 1-800-273-8255, and find those online communities and support. Oh, man. It is so – it helped me so much to just – I put up a post in the Havanese group. There are, I think now, over 700 – reactions wow and it's easily <laughs> probably 200 notes of condolences yeah i'm sure I, it's because a thing about almost all of us know exactly what this feels like maybe not the exact scenario but we almost all of us have gone through pet loss you know because yeah. because their lifespans don't aren't generally what humans are not everybody knows what it's like to lose your father your best friend whatever because they've never experienced that exact loss they know what it's like to lose someone but you know each each loss is different you know losing my dad was a whole different level than losing a good friend you know type of a thing yeah but with pets there's such a a, a ness to the whole thing you know that we all know what it's like to lose your 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 super close companion or maybe not all but you know a lot of us know so and and that's one of the beauties like you were saying with reaching out on this one is literally you can find all sorts of people who can sympathize and 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 talk with you you are certainly not alone on this not that you are on anything else either but you know um if you just post even on like your facebook wall hey i lost my yeah. pet today you'll just get such an outpouring of support from yeah. people you know so you, please don't can't keep be it in service like people can't be of service to us if we don't say ouch we hurt yeah exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> right 100%. if i you yeah. and, and and i saw some i had you know there's a lot of generic like you know you know sorry for your loss and yeah. feel your pain and blah, blah blah but then every once in a while someone said something in a way or posted a meme or a <laughs> poem or something that yeah. just went oh that's it right there oh that's <laughs> what i needed and that's what helped me through those moments right and that's those the moment thing to moments is we talked about this a while ago remember we were when uh i was talking about like the birthday wishes on facebook and i'm like i know they're generic and people are mostly doing it because facebook goes hey it's his birthday but then you go but they still took the time you still yeah. got to be grateful for that and like you were just saying it's like even though a lot of them are just the plain and i post a lot of sorry for your loss type ones because there's just nothing you can yeah, say there yeah, sometimes. Say, yeah. And it's yeah. like, unless I feel like I actually do have something to say, like you were saying, a meme, a poem, yeah. something like I, I'm just going to be like, sorry for your loss. I'm here if you need me kind of a thing. And yeah. I think I, I said something similar to that to you is like, I wish I knew what to say. Cause I, I know there's nothing, you know, and, but there's still, uh, for anyone, you know, it, it, it make sure that you do appreciate the fact that people still did stop and say, sorry for your loss because this is going to be a weird analogy but like for salty language we post a question of the week every week right we don't get a lot of engagement on that right so because people are are we're now geared to just scroll and click like you know we're not we're not conditioned anymore to socialize on social media <laughs> you know so if people stop for whatever reason and say, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, even if it's the most generic thing, you know, still make sure, make sure you count that as a, you know, when you're in your uh, gratitude mindset, you know, make, make sure that that gets a, a tick in the box too, that you don't dismiss them because they're generic or whatever, you know, because a lot of times people don't know what to say. So that's easily, yeah. that's the best thing you really can say sometimes instead of trying to make some weird you know, I know exactly what you're, what you're going through. I dropped my pizza on the floor yesterday and you're like, how is that the same? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I use that as a, I mean, cause I've literally cried over dropping pizza on a floor, but that's a whole <laughs> different depression story. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that's a true story. <laughs> but yeah. So, and right, I want to say also, different. I'm I'm really thankful for the people who've reached out to you too, because you know, since I obviously I follow you on social media, I've seen and read a lot of the comments and stuff, and there's been some really, really nice stuff said, and 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 just the outpouring is always nice to see. You know that people care, that there's empathy. You know, any I'm I'm taking any sign of empathy that I see from people as a win because I I keep seeing it erode in other areas. So when I see an outpouring of it, I'm like, good. That's it's like okay, my my heart feels a little fuller yeah. today. You know. <laughs> yes, this world is still full of humans. Thankfully, yeah. Uh, sometimes we forget that. You but, might. Uh... It's to the planet's detriment, but we're still here. Yep. <laughs> You're still here. All right, guys. How we doing? We good? Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. All right. Well, folks, we covered a lot of ground tonight and uh a lot of a lot of heavy stuff. But we wanna still hear from you. We'd love to hear from you and your thoughts and your opinions and your criticisms and all of that stuff so you know what to do if you'd like to reach out to us you can reach us at the crazy life at the crazy life podcast.weebly.com is our website the crazy life podcast at outlook.com is our email address you can also reach me direct if you'd like to talk with me one-on-one -on -one. you can reach man jen's crazy at on twitter i can't talk on twitter <laughs> At Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. And I have no other projects going on right now. So stay tuned for new stuff. Right. With that, Heno, how mm -hmm. can they reach you? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. You can actually find Adam Clark, who I brought in today, at Pet Loss EDU on Twitter. He's actually got um, uh, 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 quite the social media presence. Um, and uh, you can check out my other podcast, Moving the Needle Podcast, where we are, we're actually going to get back at it this month. And the uh, the editing show is the thing that one I already mentioned last week. But uh, just as a little, what we're going to do, we're going to analyze the movie Predator to see if it stands the test of time, and then we're going to do a versus of Best in Show versus This Is Spinal Tap. Oh man. <laughs> oh that's, that's a, a tough one that's a sophie's choice for sure yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta say i i listened to the um i find i've been catching up a little bit on my podcast and i i finally got caught up on um moving the needle so i got i finally listened to your christmas music one and whew, boy there's some brutal songs in there <laughs> <Yeah>. oh boy <laughs> so uh yeah uh so definitely go check that one out if you haven't either, because there's a couple in there I'd never heard before, and uh, I mostly agreed with most of what was said on there. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's some rough Christmas cuts in there for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and if you want to find me on social media, I'm at Stunami on Twitter. If you want to hear my other podcast, it can be found at salty underscore language on Twitter or at saltylanguage.com. That show is not safe for work. It's me and my best friend just being idiots and talking about uh, uh, pop culture, just life, whatever. Like, we didn't really talk much pop culture this week. We we actually more just talked some very random topics. But... Um, you know, sometimes we talk weird news, which again we didn't really do this week. Which is, a, it was a very kind of off week, but I I really liked that there was some random, you know, some good <laughs> weird riffing on it. Um, so yeah, so please go check those out. You can also find this show on Twitter at the Crazy Life Pod, where I post when new episodes go up, and we're part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork dot com. So please go check out the other shows on there. Uh, we're on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. And I think that's all the links. I know already covered the reaching out thing and the, you're not alone, whatnot. Um, let's see what else, what else am I forgetting? Oh yeah. Let's, uh, let's be kind to one another, especially with 
some really crazy stuff going on out out in the world right now. Um, please, you know, please be kind to one another out there. Um, show empathy for those who maybe aren't as fortunate and privileged as you are. Uh, you know, and just do whatever you can to be nice and, you know, help, help people if you can. And yeah, that's all I got. All right, folks. So with that, go out there and have the best week you possibly can. Be safe. Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. And uh, spread that love, not the COVID. Have a great week.